Jeff Levac, 104.5 The Team, 104.5theteam.com. Great day to have a great guest. Jeff Idelson, president of the Baseball Hall of Fame, joins us. Jeff, how shocked were you or were you shocked at all that Ken Griffey Jr. is now the closest to unanimous uh, inductee into the Baseball Hall of Fame? Uh, good to be with you, Levac and Andrew, as well. And no, uh, I wasn't shocked at all. I mean, this is a guy that uh, was a five-tool player, um, uh, no doubt about his abilities, um, no doubt about his place in the game. And when you combine that with the wonderful character he had, that will put you over the top in terms of percentage. So um, if there was ever going to be a guy to break Tom Seaver's mark, uh, which he held for 35 years, then a guy like uh, Ken Griffey Jr. is uh, an apropos person. Now, see, that leads me to my next question. Of course, uh, Jeff Idelson, president of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Follow him on Twitter, at Hall of Fame Prez, Prez with a Z. Uh, should Griffey Jr. have been the first unanimous guy in? You know, getting getting 240 people, or rather 440 people to agree on anything, <laughs> no matter, even that the sun is out, is impossible. So uh, the, I, I like to focus on the fact that 437 voted for him, which I'm more proud about. Uh, the three that didn't vote for him, I don't. I don't agree with it. I don't understand why you wouldn't vote for him. But the election process is a democracy, and if, and we have confidence in the writers that they're doing the right thing and voting for reasons that are are, are real. And um, again, where I don't agree with it, I don't have a problem with it either. And Jeff, when you say that, are you surprised that it took Mike Piazza so long to get into the Hall of Fame? It really didn't take him that long. I mean, four four years is not all that long, and. Um, you know, one percent of those who make it, one uh, percent of those who play the game make it. So it's difficult enough to get in. Very few people make it on the first ballot, and uh, the perspective of time is really a beautiful thing. And in Mike's case, it worked wonderfully. And we saw this year, Jeff, an increase in voting for Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens. Do you think either of these guys will get in in the near future? Tough to say. You know, it's, uh, it's tough to say when you look at this ballot. Um, everybody trended up. Uh, Mike Messina, Tim Raines, Jeff Bagwell. Uh, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, even Alan Trammell went up a big a big number on his last year on the ballot. So, you know, you had everybody trend up on the ballot. Um, and uh, and all I can say for all of those guys is that uh, that's a positive sign as you move into the future. Jeff Levac hanging out with uh, Andrew Williams is 104.5 The Team, 104.5team.com. Pleasure to be joined by the Hall of Fame president, Jeff Idelson, on Twitter, at Hall of Fame Press. All right. I have watched my Twitter, my Facebook, everything around me erupt. Mets fans are going to just descend on Cooperstown. How excited are you to host the Mike Piazza slash Ken Griffey Jr. party? Very much so, uh, Levac, because as you know, um, all the players that make it into the Hall of Fame are great. You don't have anybody who's mediocre that gets it in, gets in there, but when the players have a deep relationship with the fans, it really puts us over the top terms of attendance for that weekend. And then Ken Griffey Jr., we had a guy who played with an ever-present smile no matter what ballpark he was in. And Mike Piazza, they had the warm to him in New York uh, early on, but uh, once they did, I mean, he became a culture there. And I'm happy for Mike. I'm happy for Mets and Dodger fans. And I know that Cooperstown is going to see a tremendous amount of blue and orange uh, come July 24th. Prez, any, any truth to the rumor that you might put Griffey in with the, the baseball cap on backwards? <laughs> Uh, it would certainly be unprecedented, but, uh, uh, you know, look, artist, the plaques are art. They're pieces of art, and uh, come July 24th, you'll see it unveiled on stage, and we'll just leave that a mystery. All right, so i got to ask you this question because we, we've, we've been back and forth on this show a lot about Pete Rose, of course. Uh, as you know, uh, president of the Baseball Hall of Fame, anytime there is a slow day in sports, Pete Rose, whether he should or should not be in the Hall of Fame, becomes the big topic. Rob Manfred had some comments that basically said, hey, I'm not in charge of the Baseball Hall of Fame. If you want him in the Hall of Fame, go talk to them. So as the man that Rob Manfred grabbed by a belt loop and threw under the bus, President Jeff Idelson, what, what are your feelings on that? Well, I, I don't look at it the same, uh, perhaps, as others do in terms of him throwing us under the bus. I think what, uh, what Commissioner Manfred was doing was in explaining Rule 21 and uh, uh, Pete's permanent ban from the game, he was saying that they don't govern, MLB doesn't govern the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame has its own rules uh, as an independent, not-for-profit organization. So from our standpoint, um, anybody who stays on baseball's permanent and eligible list is not going to be an eligible candidate. Nothing's going to change for us the way nothing has changed for MLB. So there's, there's no, there hasn't been any talk on your side about potentially changing that policy? 
No, really there hasn't been. I mean, we, we feel it's a good policy. Uh, we feel it would be incongruous to be honoring someone otherwise banned from the sport by its sport. So um, really what people want who are Pete Rose fans, and, there's, and, and I'm a big Pete Rose fan. I loved watching him play. I also know from having spent eight years going into Major League clubhouses that the one rule you looked at when you walked in the door was, I won't gamble on the game. So he committed baseball's cardinal sin. But at the end of the day, what Pete Rose fans want are for his legacy to be intact. And if, you, if you've never been to the museum, you don't know this. But if you have, you know that Pete Rose is front and center. Because Everywhere. you can't tell the history of baseball without including him. Well, you bring that up. We're joined by President of the uh, Baseball Hall of Fame, uh, Jeff Idelson. Follow him on Twitter. Great follow at Hall of Fame Prez. Prez with a Z. He, he, Pete Rose is front and center. The 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 controversial PED players, their achievements are still front and center. They just don't get the plaque. Hall of Fame is really three entities under one roof. We're a museum and library that chronicles the game's history as the game unfolds on the field. We do nothing to change that. The uh, we're also an education center where we are. Uh, taking our programs in the classrooms around the country in all 50 states uh, every day of the year, and a Hall of Fame, which is the celebratory part of what we do. So the game, the game's history is there. If you want to know the game's history and see those who made it, you're going to see artifacts from their career throughout our institution. Jeff, is this a, like for me? You you know me. I I I love people, but I don't love lots of people in one place. Is it is it thirty three sixty five at the Hall of Fame or is this like if I'm thinking about getting in and just getting some real one on one time with the artifacts and, and the exhibits? Is this a good time for me to get in there? It really is. We're open the year round. The only three days we're closed are Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving when you really should be home with your families. But at this time of year, it's a lot quieter. Uh, and and uh, you know, especially in January, if we get one of these, you know, another one or zero degree days, you might be able to count our visitors on Mordecai Brown's pitching hand. <laughs> President of the Baseball Hall of Fame, Jeff Idelson. Jeff, uh, July twenty second to the twenty fifth uh, is is induction week, and we're looking forward to it. We're excited, and if it's okay with you, we'll probably bother you a couple times between now and then for Mets fans. Never bother. Always good to be with Levac, and also you, Andrew, and uh, look forward to seeing you all in Cooperstown.